How many of you guys are thinking about doing PhDs at some point in the future? Yeah, I'm just not sure. Academia is quite the world for me. I was kind of thinking of getting a job and seeing if my career needs it. Not just to call myself doctor or anything, but also... No. I think I'm employed. I don't really feel like doing three years of research on something that I end up not liking. To sort of differentiate you from, from a lot of other candidates. But I have found that quite a lot of the jobs that I'm like looking at that take my interest do ask for PhDs. That's kind of how I feel, only from talking to other people who have done PhDs, who say after they've done their PhD they struggle to find jobs still. Hi, my name's Ben. I did a PhD before starting a company to help PhDs start their own companies. What I want to talk about today is the idea of should you actually do a PhD? And I'm going to put a little bit of a bias lens on it in that I think a lot of the things that I've watched that discuss this question focus on really the experience of doing the PhD and what will you take away from it and how will your scientific capabilities improve over the course of the program. And I think all of those conversations are are interesting and and accurate and informative but I think having talked to people that's not really the reason they get into a PhD they get into a PhD because they hope it unlocks some pathway ahead for them I want to spend more time thinking about what that pathway at the end of the PhD looks like what are the current market trends does it make it easier for you to get a job does it make it harder for you to get a job I'll break this down into two sections and across kind of six points. Three of them positive points, three of them negative points. I'll start with a positive because that's more fun. During the PhD, positive number one. Really, I think this is kind of the core bit of what a PhD actually is. It's the experience of turning yourself into a researcher. And I think there's very few ways other than a PhD to actually do it, to get your hands on fundamental science or engineering or other subject area and get as deep as you possibly can over a multi-year period of time. I always try and put this in context of what the PhD actually feels like. In year one, when you enter into it, you suddenly realize how much you don't know about everything. You've probably come recently off of finishing a master's and you felt pretty good about yourself. Like most of the things around physics or chemistry or biology or whatever your subject area, you kind of knew them and you've memorized them and you've regurgitated them on tests with a pen, not literally. And actually at this point, really what you've done is you've studied the history of your subject area. You've recreated all of the past fantastic new advances that other people have done. A PhD is not a history of a subject area, you are sitting at the absolute forefront, the barrier between what the world, what the human population knows about a subject and what it doesn't know about a subject. It's quite an appealing, quite a, quite a sexy, quite an exciting way of thinking about a PhD. And I agree, a PhD absolutely can be exciting, particularly if you're enjoying it, particularly if it's going well, that makes it much, much easier. And you should really, at the end of your PhD, be a world leader in some small subject area, but still one of the few people in the whole world that knows the stuff that you know. That first experience of, of being one of the first people in the world to see a new phenomenon, that's amazing. It feels absolutely incredible. However, the flip side of this is the first negative. Negative number one is that this journey is long, and lonely and difficult. Give them nothing, but take from them everything. Typically, although you will have a supervisor and maybe some group mates that are working around you that can help you, everyone will be focusing on quite different topics. People don't typically overlap, but you really need to move into the position of being that master of your own subject area. One of the first things that struck me when I started the PhD, this was year zero of the PhD, was just all the information that I wanted to know. Suddenly, these were the Wikipedia articles that didn't exist, as silly as that sounds. Just doesn't exist in nice, polished, refined form. Some people out there definitely will understand it and be able to explain it to you, but it hasn't gone through those layers of science communicators, God bless them, out in the world that take difficult ideas and turn them into easy to digest ideas. That process hasn't happened. So every piece of knowledge that you need to build some new understanding, you have to fight for it. And it can be quite draining, it can be tough. And that brings me to point three or negative number two about doing the PhD. The idea that at the end of the process, you feel very, very, very capable but you feel very, very, very capable in one teeny tiny little area, probably 
that won't have any jobs associated with that area. I think one of the major down points of a PhD is that you feel like you are overly specialized. And this is a fear that I know a lot of people uh, kind of have voiced to me and, and worry about that they will be pigeonholed into doing something very particular and there won't be that many opportunities to do that particular thing out in the world, either within academia, within industry, within other things. And I think to a certain extent, that's absolutely correct. And I felt it at the end of my PhD. I did a PhD in optical physics. At the end of the PhD, I absolutely thought of myself as an optical physicist. I said, my skills start and end right around optics and just before engineering. And actually, that's totally not true. A PhD is an exercise in learning how to learn. And in a four year period, if you've done one in the UK, you've gone from pretty much zero knowledge about a subject area up until the point of it being cutting edge and really only a handful of people in the whole world maybe knowing more than you do about the subject area. If you can do that over four years, you can go and turn your brain to most other subjects and repeat that exercise, maybe not up to 100% mastery of the area, but up to 80% very, very, very quickly. And some of the best advice that was ever given to me was that I shouldn't look at myself as an optical physicist. I should look at myself much more broadly as a scientist, someone that can take ideas, distill them down, understand the fundamental mechanics that are at play and apply them and learn them and understand them very quickly. Negative number three, I think this problem really is compounded by the fact at the end of the PhD, what a PhD has prepared you for is a career in academia to go PhD, postdoc, lecturer, academic. And actually very, very, very few PhD students get anywhere close to that trajectory. There's a study done by the Royal Society back in 2010 that said that 53% of PhDs that study science or engineering leave the field of science entirely within one year of graduating. 53%, more than half of graduating PhD students leave the field within one year. And most commonly they cite a lack of opportunities within academia and a lack of interesting job opportunities within industry. There is a slightly higher probability of raising a million pounds as a startup than there is of finishing a PhD and becoming a full-time academic professor. At the end of my PhD, I studied nanophysics, as I said, nanophysics was kind of in the slumps. All the funding for it really had dried up and gone elsewhere, largely into quantum. Quantum was the new sexy science. As a result, postdocs were few and far between. There was one in Texas that I found. I didn't really want to move to Texas for a host of reasons. It was also only for six months. After that six month period, I'd need to look for the next one. Probably the next one would be six months also. I'd need to hop around, hop around, hop around. That's a very difficult thing to do whilst you're in the prime of your life, whilst you want to build a career, build a community, build friends, build family around you. Uh, it's really not for everyone. The other half of that worrying fact, maybe I should have broken these into two, but the other half of that worrying negative point is that industry really isn't much better if you're a PhD qualified scientist. At the moment, there's a really strong trend across some very large corporate research groups downsizing their internal R&D departments. What they prefer to do is wait around until they see winners emerging either through uh, spinning out from a university or starting up. They'd much rather use their money to acquire those interesting groups than they would to fund internally R&D portfolios. And I think that's a really critical thing to understand. Industry is moving to a more economically efficient method of operation for themselves. But unfortunately, what that means is that for scientists, jobs are again, fewer and further between. And that brings me to my next point, which is positive number two and dovetails nicely from all of that doom and gloom that I was just spreading to actually turn it on its head and say, it's not really that bad. What we're going through is industrial revolution 4.0. For those big, massive companies that change the world, the next generation of those will be grounded 
in core principles of fundamental science across physics, chemistry, biology, and engineering. And increasingly, as we said in the last point, these large industry groups aren't taking as active of a role because it's expensive in pursuing all of these research and development areas simultaneously forward. Actually, what they're focusing on more and more and more is that these ideas evolve out of university. And who are the people that are actually driving them forward in university? Well, you guessed it, it's the PhDs. And you might have said that although those jobs walking straight into industry don't exist anymore, and those jobs walking straight into academia don't really exist anymore either, actually there is a pathway to create your own jobs based on the research that you do that uniquely you and only you can get started because you are a world leader in this field, in this subject area. If PhDs take those ideas and turn them into companies, those are the targets for acquisition from the GSKs, from the Unilevers, from the GEs of the world. Those are exactly the things they're looking for. Amazing technologies with capable people around them to acquire, to bring in. That is the model exactly that industry is looking for. So if you know that, you might as well play into that hand. And I think one of the only ways to be at that forefront is to go through the PhD. I think having finished a master's, you're very well versed in, like I said, the history of the field, but you haven't pushed forward. You haven't developed the research capabilities to actually push forward the fundamental understanding that then becomes very valuable because only very few people in the world understand it. And that brings us to our final point, positive number three, which is that the future will be created by a very unique group of individuals that not only understand the forefront of technological capability, but can also spot opportunities for commercial translation into the world. There's a very narrow group of people that can do both of those things. And what I will say is that it's much easier to take someone that is a world leader in quantum mechanics and synthetic biology and synthetic chemistry and teach them enough about business to understand a commercial opportunity. It's much, much, much easier to do that than to take a CEO who's been there and done it five, 10, 15 times before and teach them enough about quantum mechanics or synthetic biology so that they can spot or evolve a new technology there and take it into the marketplace. It's much, much, much easier to take those very capable PhDs that are fast moving, the prime of their life, that can work hard, that are arguably quite cheap still in the grand scheme of things, and to teach them enough commercial capability to get their own ideas off the ground. And that is a group against which you cannot compete and only a PhD does that for you. My unique and absolutely biased take on what a PhD actually is at the moment. Is a PhD worth it? Should I actually do one? My vote would be yes. If you're the sort of person that wants to push forward, that has the resilience, that wants to drive their understanding of science, of engineering, and really push a barrier forward that hasn't been pushed by anyone else before, yes, this is the sort of thing for you. If you are someone that is determined to get into academia, if you are someone that's determined to get into industry, it's just important to understand that this pathway isn't as much of a done deal as it once was. Is it impossible? Absolutely not. Nothing is impossible. But is it harder than it used to be? Yes, it is. It's important to know that. However, what I think a PhD sets you up for is something unique in the world that only a PhD can provide you. Some complement of cutting edge understanding in a really hard technical field that no one else or very few other people in the whole world know about and something that might have real value, something that you might be able to translate into something that impacts people or creates economic wealth. And there's only really one way to touch into that forefront of cutting edge and actually be able to take it and drive it forward yourself. And you get that as a result of doing a PhD. What do you think? Do you agree? Is a PhD worth doing? Let me know. Take from them!